Today, we celebrate the 13th Sunday in ordinary time. And the word of God encourages us to welcome Christ in others and to be sensitive to the needs of one another in order to make a positive difference in their lives. And in the first reading, we see this couple, the Shunem couple. They welcomed Prophet Elisha in their house. They were welcoming him because they knew he was a prophet. And they knew what he was coming to do in that area. And they, they made a room where he will be coming to stay. And for all this kindness, generosity, hospitality, Elisha would pray for them. And this couple did not have a child. And Elisha, through his prayers, this couple was able to be blessed with a child. A reward that comes, that we have been told in the, in the gospel of today, that if you welcome a prophet, because he is a prophet, you receive a prophet reward. And you know, sometimes my mind, my mind has this funny thinking, you know. I want to put you into my mind. Sometimes I, I'm like, okay, you know, there are these people who will come into their house. They cook for me very nice meals. And you know, people ask me, Father, what can we cook for you? And I, my answer is always, cook your best family dish. That's what I want, you know. Because if, if, if I every time say, cook for me steak, steak, then I will never taste another food. And I want to taste different food. And I imagine that these people who welcome me, then they receive this priest reward, you know. But my message today, which comes from the gospel, is this line, they say that whoever loves the father or mother, son or daughter, more than me, is not worthy of me. And whoever does not take up his or her cross and follow me is not worthy of me. And my question is, does this mean that God does not want us to love our children? Does it mean that God doesn't want us to love our parents? I don't think so. What God is telling us that all whatever we have is from him. And our first dedication is to him, he who has given us the beautiful family. It's not saying that we should not love them, but our dedication. And the second part says that whoever receives a prophet will get a prophet reward. And whoever receives a righteous man because he's a righteous man who receive a righteous man's reward. And this is where I have problems. And my problem is, who is a genuine messenger today? Look at what is happening in the pulpit. A lot of messages from us priests, a lot of messages very misleading. You go to this church, you find a, preach, a priest preaching, but you are like, is this a message? You go to another place, you find a different message, contradicting the other one. Who is a genuine messenger today? What is happening? What is happening from our pulpits? How can we tell a false teacher from a genuine one? Today, the truth has become subjective. It's no longer the objective truth that we were taught. I was told that truth is one and immutable. Truth does not change. Not a constitution can never change a truth. Even when 100 people say that killing is allowed by a constitution, it will never change. It will still be a wrong thing.
that what it means to have an immutable truth, which is one. It's not changed by human being. We were taught that the Bible is the word of God. Today, it's becoming very difficult to tell people that the, the Bible is the word of God. People have started questioning it. Why? Because it doesn't teach what we wanted to hear. We are getting afraid. We the priest. These days there is a lot of voices, people asking, I, I don't like the bishop, I don't like the pope, I don't feel like he represents me. Why do we have these feelings? Why? Why do we have it? Why do you find the people looking for churches? I've been moving around looking for the best church. Why is it like this? If truth is one and immutable, why do we move around looking for churches? It's because of the confusion. And this confusion is coming from the pulpit. We are afraid of you. When I say of you, I don't mean you, okay? Don't look at me with those eyes. But sometimes we are afraid of you. The conservatives, they want you to say, this is what the church is saying, and don't explain, just say it. We have the middle people who are like, it's fine, whatever you say is the word of God. We have the liberals. You say this, they are like, no, that is not love, that is hate. You are preaching hatred. It's not me, it's the word of God. I didn't mean that. Different voices. Everybody's afraid of saying, calling through the truth, including us. In the second reading, Paul recounts how Christ offered us a new life when we accepted the baptism. The day we were baptized is the day a new life was ushered in us. This new life is not the normal way of life, my dear people. It's not. It's not the normal way of life. It's a different way. It's a new life inside us. If the church stops challenging us, who will challenge us? If your child is doing what is right, and then you keep telling the child, that is right, that is good. Do you think that child would grow up to be a mature woman or, or man? Do you think so? Hello? Do you think so? I don't think. A good mother is the one who tells their kid that was wrong. Then they will grow knowing this is not right. I can't pour hot water on, on my brother. It's wrong. You can't say it's right. It's wrong. Don't do it again. Please stop it. What if the church doesn't say anything? Who will correct us? Even for us who are preaching, sometimes... This new way of life is not easy for us. It's not. It's not. It's difficult. But every day you wake up and say, I have to live this new way of life. It's not the normal way. And this is what God has called us to live. One of the, another thing that bothers me is that as I said, I have been here for five years. My question that I ask myself is that, have I brought a positive change to the people's life, the people of St. John's? 
Have I helped them to glorify God and be closer to him than they were when I came here five years ago? Am I preaching my own gospel? Do I tell the people what they want to hear? Or I preach the gospel of Christ? What have I been doing all this time? It's not easy, my dear people. Christ is calling us to be more devoted to this life that we are called. The beauty of it is not a life of judgment. We don't judge. You don't judge people. You don't go deciding who is doing right and wrong. No. It's a life whereby you go deep into yourself. And know what he is calling you to be. Because of these different voices coming from the pulpit, are we supposed to run away from the church? Is that what we are supposed to do? Are we supposed to go cursing? I don't like that man. I don't like that bishop. I don't like the Pope. I don't want to hear him. Are we supposed to be doing this? Is that the right way? I don't think so. Let's, let's pray. Pray for us that we may understand this truth because I believe that we don't understand it. There is a, or we are so afraid to talk about it. Pray for us that we can teach that which is right, that which is truth, that which is immutable. You don't need to go, you don't need to run away from the church. The church is the mother. I am not the mother. I am not. I'm just a messenger. The church is the mother. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit.